uh, data processing, about the, uh, some frameworks and how we use Spark. Uh, so uh, today our main topic is how to uh, use Spark to do the data processing. Uh, let's check our agenda today. So uh, we will cover three uh, main topics. The first thing is to uh, for some marketing or some uh, marketing demand and the next thing is uh, Spark introduction. We will introduce from different as sub ap aspect. And the last thing is practice. If we still have time, uh, so uh, if I'm wrong in this in this one, anybody have other opinion or uh, other ideas? Please please correct me. Yeah, thank you. So uh, the first the first one is. I know everybody. A lot of a lot of people are. Uh, transform themselves to uh, data processing engineer is they are, they are, it's because of the high demand on the marketing side and the salary and the demand and your self value about the, of the, for the company. So uh, that's why I, am I as a Java developer as before transform into a, a, a data engineer, but I'm struggling to do that. <laughs> so uh, I checked the Indies best job and uh, I saw a very interesting thing for uh, in salary only sal salaries perspective. So uh, the data, data scientist uh, salary and the data engineer salary, machine learning engineer salary is like thirty percent more than other jobs. I think maybe it's because of the, it's more complex or it's more. Uh, but some reason it's there are so many uh, demands on these jobs, even though in Singapore or in all of the world, even though in China. Uh, we, the salary in the same level of uh, digi data engineer and uh, uh, Java developer, data engineer will have more than 50% of the salary than the Java developer. And I think the demand, as the demand as a lot of more companies are required the smart application and a smart, uh, smart application and a smart system, they will require more, uh, more jobs or more uh, guys working on this area. So, uh, that's why we, we are trying to uh, make ourselves as a data engineer or we, as a marketing or as a sales or as a, uh, as a engineer or we are trying to know something about the data. So uh, this one is trying to uh, introduce some business, business scenarios which we can use uh, data to solve. For example, in e-commerce, this is the most traditional one and the most popular one. Uh, when we are buying books in Amazon, and we will find that if you buy one book, he will recommend a lot of books in the uh, bottom of the of that page, and that that one is very related. So I remember last time I bought by all the rest of four books. So I think it's very it's very powerful now. And uh, for what uh, the both uh, orange color is what I have touched before. Uh, the first one is the customer analysis. I think a lot of a lot of people will will got some advertise when you are doing the, uh, for example, when you are using Grab or when you are using some other apps. This one is try. Uh, I have done a a demo demo uh, sales demo demo sales online online e-commerce system to do the analysis based on their e-commerce system. Uh, what we are trying to do is, uh, based on all the customers' behaviors in the system, and we collected the data, and then we an analyzed the behaviors, which, which kind of, which, which kind of uh, car, which type of car, the, the most, the most, uh, the, the, the topest, uh, the topest hot of the car, and the uh, what kind of cars the people people are spend more time to focus on that and but they do not they do not uh, need to buy is because uh, money is too higher or it's too expensive. So uh, this is the first one to analyze the customer behavior, and uh, we also have have a storage forecast. This one is as before uh, we we are trying to help Shell to uh, forecast the storage, uh, which he need to. Uh, distribute the the product into different warehouse, uh, but but they don't know uh, which one, which part, uh, which part, uh, which single uh, warehouse should 
uh, say should keep how many products. So uh, we try to forecast based on the transactions, uh, transa dif transactions from different locations, and then we uh, analysis this product history and product trans transaction, and then we uh, give them a forecast. So uh, in this arrow, you need to put uh, one million, one million uh, products, and in this arrow, you only keep you only keep half of the million. So uh, this is based on the transaction data we help them to do the analysis. So and all the others, like very typical scenarios, for example, the uh, insurance pricing and uh, anti-fraud and micro-credit and the smart chatbot, for example, uh, but I, 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 I use some, I use some uh, banking software, but when I have some question, I, you need to call this, the, service, serv the service guy. And uh, in, in a lot of companies, they are building the chatbot to help you to uh, answer your questions. So it's it's smart, and I I I, I think uh, a lot of people already know that. So I think it's smarter and smarter. So this is a uh, this is some some user case the data processing technologies can solve. So we just uh, list some of it, but everybody are focusing on the, on your own arrow can combine the data technologies and analysis and with your real business scenarios and see what, what we can improve, use these data technologies. So this is the, uh, some typical user case. Uh, before we go deeply into some technical things, how many people are you, have using Spark before? Could you please raise your hand? How many people are using MapReduce or some processing framework? I think, wow, okay. Uh, actually, Spark is very, Spark is popular is because of it's very easy to start up and very easy to use. But Flink is also, I, I heard somebody or also use Flink, and so Flink is also, Flink is, uh, Flink is more new compared to Spark, right? But Spark is more stable and so many people, so many companies has already used Spark to build the models. So uh, that's why we try to cover Spark today. Just the introduction and uh, some have fun with some program thing and uh, have a conceptual overview of what Spark is and what Spark can give us. So uh, let's go into some technical thing. Uh, this one, in this subtopic, we'll cover some Spark uh, knowledge. For example, the, uh, the model, the deploy model, the programming model, and some conceptual knowledge. Uh, this is some features for Spark. Spark is, uh, what is Spark? So when we, when, we, uh, when we are trying to learn or when we are trying to use, we will, we will think, uh, what, what, is, what is this tool doing? And does it really can match our requirement? So uh, our first question is, what is Spark? Spark is an uh, in-memory data processing system data processing framework, and uh, it can support different kinds of languages. For example, uh, you can use Python, you can use Java, you can use Scala, and you can use I. So it's, it's, it's tolerance with different languages. And uh, Spark can support different type of processing. So uh, somebody will say that uh, Spark is kind of ecosystem, but I will say that it's kind of processing system uh, processing ecosystem, uh, which it can support different kinds of processing. So for example, your batch processing, your uh, micro batch processing, your streaming processing, and, uh, and uh, some graph processing, and uh, structure, structure processing. So this whole different kinds of processing combined, with, combined together and uh, combined as a spark. So mm, just imagine that kind of like in, as before, we, uh, when we are making something, when we are making in the industry, uh, the batch processing is kind of like, I, I, uh, I take a big box and uh, uh, processing this big box. And the streaming micro batch is kind of like, I split the big box into some s small box. And I processing, every, every, I processing each box every time and uh, very fastly. Streaming like, I processing each product. I got the record and I processing it. So it's 
more like the granular of the processing is smaller and smaller and smaller. So uh, this kind of, and also uh, back to the uh, features of Spark, uh, it's a, it has a good programming model, which is, I think, I think this, this one is, this one is most uh, uh, fancy, fancy programming model I have ever touched because it's, it's kind of like it's, it's functional programming. So it, can, it inherit a lot of features from Scala. So sometimes I, 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 as before I use Java, I need to uh, write a lot of class and I need to uh, combine all of the class together and uh, do a lot of things to uh, implement what count or how it works. But for this one, I just need to uh, write, write as your mind. You think, as, you, you think follow the, the line of your mind and you uh, finish the task. It's kind of like the pipeline thing, all these things, pipeline thing, I, I map, I, I reduce, I processing. So it's, 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 it's good, it's great. And it can also uh, support different types of running model for Spark. So this is the most powerful feature uh, is because uh, a lot of companies will have different type of uh, cluster. For example, young cluster, they already uh, write the uh, map MapReduce, uh, run MapReduce jobs inside of the cluster. But now if, if you need to involve Spark, then do you need to set up on another cluster or do you need to run a new team to do the same thing? So Spark, the, the powerful of, of this one is Spark can running in different cluster manager, running in different cluster. So for example, it can run in Yarn cluster. So you don't need to set up a Spark, class, Spark cluster and to run it inside, and you can use your existing one. And it can also run in standalone. This standalone is Spark, Spark support, support Spark uh, cluster. And it can also support Mesos, Kubernetes, and EC2. So uh, the most fancy one, I think, is the Kubernetes. It's a new feature which, which published it at February of this year. So uh, this one will be more utilize your resource. And uh, it's more powerful than before, but it's, it's a new feature, so you need to be more stable and uh, yeah, maybe need to spike more and waste some time to make it to uh, let it more stable and then we can use. Uh, the fifth one is it can integrate with different upstream and downstream storage and uh, ingesting tools. So this one will be, will be so I think, I think the, the vision of the Spark is very clear. What he want to do is just the processing, processing, processing different, do different type of processing and I can make it in integration very easily, integrate with other data storage. For example, uh, some MySQL database and some NoSQL database, some uh, distribution So it's, it's, it's very powerful for you to integrate. You just, need to, uh, you just need to involve some dependency files, and then you write your API or write your code as similar as, as others. So it's very, it's very powerful. And uh, uh, Spark encapsulate, this one is, uh, the last one is a typical feature for Spark. So uh, it encapsulates each data as a RDD. So it, it means I encapsulate your product inside our box. I provide a different operations on the box, and then you can do a lot of pro operations. And then uh, when you are doing some pipeline thing, you just uh, need to call the each box of the operation, so it make you easy to do the programming. Uh, the date set and date frame is uh, encapsulated for the RDD, and it, it's more, it's even more powerful because it support different kinds of processing. So why I just uh, support one one layer of the uh, of the model and. Uh, in, in the behind, you can uh, negotiate or you can communicate with different processing type. Processing type. So this is some typical features of Spark. Uh, this one is a sample code for the uh, Spark. I just uh, want to give an overview of how we can uh, use just a piece of code to write a, to write a secondary thought. So uh, the structure, I think the structure is also very clear. The structure in your right hand is we initialize the, the contest, <coughs> this Spark contest. And then we got data. That means I integrate with data ingesting tool. I got data. And then we're processing, processing the data. We write, we, we uh, call, a call a lot of APIs and we're processing the data. 
and then we can save, save the result into our data storage. So this is very clear for this bug. So we can see the, re the read rectangle, the first, the first uh, part of code, we initialize the contest, Spark contest. What is Spark contest? Spark contest is I use this contest to negotiate with all the clusters. So I initialize a contest, and I let the contest to uh, communicate with the cluster to got the resources for me to run all our, all our job. So uh, the first one is I initialize contest, I uh, load the data from outside. I get the data, and uh, I processing. I processing the data, and then I save the data. So, but the, 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 the key line of the key mind of this of this uh, code is is, the, is similar. The only difference is uh, where you want to get, how you want to process, and where you want to save. And then another risk, the another part is. How you gonna configure your processing and to uh, do the performance turning and to uh, more match your requirements? So this is a code sample. Uh, until now, any questions? So let's continue. Uh, the last one is some some uh, some programming model. So in this subtopic, we'll introduce some uh, programming model. So uh, as said of as we mentioned of programming model, what do we want to what what do we can imagine for programming model? So uh, that means if we learn programming model, what do we can learn? So the overview of different APIs. So we will have an overview of different APIs, and we will uh, have we will know that what we can what we can what we can use for this programming model. So uh, we uh, how how do we Use it to uh, integrate with our upstream and downstream, downstream storage and downstream tools. And the last one is uh, how to how to use this one to write Spark program. So uh, Spark has two different two different operations, two different type of reaches. The first one is trans transformation, and the second one is actions. So uh, I think I think it inherit from the lazy. Uh, lazy execute for from the Scala. So uh, for the transformations, it will not execute when you call the function, when you call the method. And for the actions, I think it's for the actions when you call the method, it will do the execution, do the execute. So uh, there are different different kinds of different kinds of transformation and actions. So I, I will not go through so details. I just have overview of this one. But just the, uh, there is some. Some code things need to consider is uh, when you just uh, uh, avoid avoid uh, shuffle as much as possible, and uh, try to do combine uh, before shuffle as much as possible. There's some some mistakes. You you you're thinking uh, you're thinking uh, use reduce key or you re, re, uh, use combine key. So it's just to follow some guidelines is to so let the uh, reduce the reduce the shuffle as much as possible. And it will cost a, a lot of time. Ha also, maybe in the future we'll have some performance issues. And uh, all the others is I think I think it's uh, everybody. Uh, I think it's very ob obvious. It's very similar to Java Stream. And any people uh, familiar with Java Stream and can. Well, know the API very obviously. So this is some programming model, and this is uh, how we get data and how we save data. Uh, one one thing I want to uh, mention is this one is Spark Core. We are we haven't touched Spark Circle or Spark Machine Learning or Spark Session thing. So so the get data. So I just uh, put test file. Maybe we have we have we have the others, but we we didn't touch in here. And for save data, we just use the Spark Core API to uh, save the data into <coughs> our different file system. So uh, you will see that there is some difference of of the API. So uh, some are save save into HDFS file system, some are save into uh, HBase data si storage system, and some are save into as record. Some are save into as a file or different file types. So we call. Uh, different API based on your requirements. 
So as we mentioned that uh, Spark can communicate with different types of storage. So um, there are so many, uh, so many types of database, file system, storage. Uh, I just found, found it from Databricks, Databricks documentation. So anybody uh, interested in can uh, check the documentation in Databricks. I think Databricks, Databricks is, uh, is a company which hold a uh, Spark in cloud, kind of make Spark in cloud. So uh, until now, any question? Is this too high level to, to too far or too more detail. <laughs> okay, so so uh, until then, we just uh, review something. Uh, we touch something about what is Spark and uh, uh, what is Spark. What is Spark program looks like and uh, uh, two types of two types of Spark operations. One is transformation. One is actions. You use transformations to transform your data. You use actions to execute your DAG and uh, your DAG. So. So, uh, and the different types of upstream and downstream database and storages. And uh, uh, if you want, if you are trying to spike, uh, does Spark can support this, this uh, storage system? Or you can just uh, check some more documentation more, deep, more deeply to check whether it can support your requirement. So that's the first part of Spark. So uh, we, so in the last, in the last topic, we will cover some uh, running and deployment, execution and deployment model, uh, how Spark can support. So before that, we want to uh, introduce some terminology of Spark. So uh, we, uh, people use Spark as before may uh, have, have already meet Spark driver, Spark contest, uh, application master, and execute and task. Maybe they, it's not very clear enough how how the Spark pro program can run in uh, YAN model. How does it how does it distribute the task? So uh, before that, I just try to uh, explain some explain of what the what, what does this meaning. So it, application is kind of like your Spark application, and it combined with a lot of jobs you use, and uh, these jobs combine with combine together, and uh, so it's kind of like. Uh, our software application. And uh, what is Spark driver? Spark driver is the start point to is uh, Spark driver uh, try to electrolyze your Spark contest and uh, to uh, construct the uh, construct the your DAC files or your your uh, or your all the preparation stage. So that means uh, Spark driver help you to prepare prepare your prepare your tasks to uh, execute your initialize your contest. Uh, so what is Spark contest? As we described before, it's an uh, it's entry point, and it helps you to uh, negotiate or communicate with, communicate with cluster managers. Uh, just uh, think, about, think about a big Angular project. Uh, Spark driver is kind of like uh, your, your product owner. And the uh, Spark contest is this Jira board. I initialize this Jira board. And the uh, application master is kind of like your program manager. So uh, every time you run a program in a, in a company, you will have an application master. And executor like uh, who, who really, executor like who really do the jobs. So I uh, assign, assign the task to the ex executor. Executor will, uh, Run the task in the in the in the container. He will in some other context it calls container, but in Spark context we call executor. So um, this is a relationship. So uh, let me more clear about this one. So so based on based on this, is there any questions? Okay, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay, so uh, the last one is how we how we uh, debug and deployment with Spark, and how we uh, write our Spark program and uh, de deploy to our remote server. So the debug and deployment, you can use two ways to, uh, do, to do this. The first one is you can, uh, when, you are, when you are trying to discover something, you can use Spark Shell to uh, 
in your local and to run it interactively. So uh, every time when you uh, input online or and you will get the result as soon as possible. So it's back shell, it helps you to discover. But when you are trying to uh, really solve some problem or write some Spark program, you can use, in, in debugger mode, we can uh, import some dependency with Maven and Gradle and then run, with, run in your local. Uh, for the deployment, as we uh, discussed before, is there are different ways to uh, do the deployment. So I, I, I will skip this. So if anybody, unless anybody have questions for the deployment model. I think it's, it's clear, right? So use methods, yarn, and Kubernetes. So the different ways for different ways for running in local is you can import a uh, Spark core and uh, but but just to notice that if you are uh, if you are trying to running or communicating with yarn, you need to maybe involve the uh, HDFS and uh, or yarn dependency. So uh, there is difference in Python Spark in Spark with Python and Spark in uh, Scala. So uh, when you are trying to use Spark Shell uh, with Scala language, you run in Spark Shell. When you are using Spark Shell in uh, Python language, you use PySpark. It's it's too different. So different languages. Uh, Spark Spark core is in the bottom and uh, in the top of of, of that one. Uh, in the top of that one, it pro it encapsulated with different languages, so uh, and to provide the API. So and uh, uh, after, also you can use the Spark submit to submit your job into a remote or remote uh, cluster or your standalone cluster. Uh, we are not gonna check the de more details about what these parameters mean. Uh, anybody are interested can check the uh, documentation for this part. So, ah, let me drink a little piece of water. <laughs> this picture is I got, I got from documentation, the uh, Spark documentation. Uh, maybe I, I can explain something with, with, with it. So as we see that the driver program, the driver program will initialize the Spark contest. And uh, inside of Spark contest, it will uh, initialize uh, the Spark configuration and uh, the uh, the DAC, the DAC, the DAC model, and uh, uh, then it will communicate with the cluster manager to assign the resources, and the com com cluster manager will uh, talk with the worker nodes to are you available to uh, run this job? So uh, if yes, he will uh, he will uh, return the he will run the executor and uh, return the address to the Spark contest, and then in the future. Spark, con Spark contest will uh, dispatch the map task or reduce task to the uh, directly to the work node. So uh, one thing you need to uh, think about is, as before, uh, we meet a problem is I try I, I running the running the uh, Spark cluster in the cloud. So and uh, we we initialize that we install that cluster as private IP address. IP address. So that means uh, this one, th this part is inside of cloud, and uh, they communicate with internal IP internal address. And uh, when this one is in your in your uh, in your local laptop, and you communicate with the uh, cloud manager, but this one can you can communicate. But sometimes when you are uh, negotiated with the worker node, you will you will fail. It because in, in this one, in, in, in the uh, internal of the cluster, they communicate with the private IP address. So when you negotiate with, class, with uh, cluster manager, you ask them, are you available to give me some workload to run my task? And he will give you the private address. And then you use the private address to connect to the workload, it will fail. So just the care of that. So, so based on that, we will have some other ways to uh, avoid this, this kind of scenario we will cover in the yeah in later so this is the uh, deployment model sorry uh, I have a question the task that you have there is there a container is it is there a container like worker node uh, the executor is a container uh, executor is a container 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The task is kind of like I want to map, map one value to another. This is a concrete task. So I send it into send it into worker node, and worker node will execute that task inside of a container. So you can have multiple tasks for a uh, Yes, you can have multiple executors. But one thing to consider about is uh, for 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 Yarn, if you want to ex run multiple executors in one node, one physical node, you need to use Yarn cluster. So uh, for the Pakistan node and methods, only can run one executor per node. Node is a physical node, and the executor is a container in there. Yes. And you can have multiple containers in one node. Uh, yes, for yarn, yes. And in each container, you can have multiple tasks. Yes. I can have multiple map tasks. Or yes, I can yes. Map yes, yes. Just uh, know that executor is a process. It's a, uh, it's a JV, JVM instance, and inside you can have multiple suite. Each thread process as a task to process your task. So, and uh, any any other question for this? Okay. So, this is so. Uh, let's move on to the yarn cluster. So, uh, why we why we usually use yarn to uh, execute our Spark jobs, Spark programs. So. Uh, I highlight three uh, advantages. The first one is re resource utilization. Uh, Yarn has very good uh, utilization and uh, optimization in resource usage. And uh, uh, it can run multiple executors, which we explained in the last uh, slides. It can run multiple executors in every load. So that means it can run uh, a lot of JVM instance in, the, in a single physical load. And it can support authentication. This is very important. It's because when you some when when when, when uh, different departments share one share one cluster, and you publish your job, publish your program into the cluster, uh, maybe you uh, maybe uh, and you are processing your data inside. But how about uh, how about other program want to request your resource? So this one is try to. Uh, if you want to uh, run it inside of a cluster, or if you want, want to uh, request other resources, so you need to have permission. So uh, Yarn only, only Yarn support this, this, uh, this permission, this authentication. So this is three features, three typical features why we choose Yarn. And also there are so many other features, for example, the resource isolation. So I use this resource, and uh, I will not, if my program uh, allocated one resource. This resource will not be shared with others. But in methods and in standard knowing, we don't know. Maybe it will share, maybe it will not. So that is isolating and uh, some other features we, we didn't cover here, but yeah. So, uh, but, but uh, for, the yarn, for the yarn mode, there is still two different, two different modes to running, to running the uh, Spark program. In the program inside of uh, Yarn cluster. So uh, be care, be think about uh, it support two ways to run in your program. One is Yarn client, another is Yarn cluster. So client means you put your you put your you put your driver running inside of, running in your client mode, running in your client. And the cluster mode is you put your driver running in the cluster. So it's it's kind of like some some people were confused about this 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 concept. It's the key the key difference is where you running your driver program. If you running your driver program with the application master, which is inside of cluster, it's cluster mode. If you running your driver program yourself, you want to do interactively process interactively uh, processing, and uh, it's young client mode. So this is. Two in the uh, in the right is very similar to uh, the the chart as before. That one is an abstract chart. So this one is more concrete, focus on the uh, yarn thing. So we can see that there is still some class manager, but the class manager has already changed into yarn class manager, and uh, the slave and the slave is 
is worker. We know that uh, Yang is a master slave architecture, so this slave is seen as worker and executor. So it's very similar, so I will skip this. So the another, another big feature for, for running the Spark program is uh, we can run it in, run it in Kubernetes cluster. So as, as what, so what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is a, is a kind of like Docker cluster. It can more help you to utilize your uh, resource. It's a new feature. So uh, how we run it inside of Kubernetes cluster is uh, Spark app is submitted to the API server. So we can see this chart. You use Spark submit to submit to the API server. And then uh, the Kubernetes scheduler will schedule some ports for you. That means we'll schedule some Docker for you. And then at the same time, uh, you scheduler will run our driver. And after the driver is finished running, and he will notice, he will uh, talk to the API server and to assign the task to the different ports, different executors. So this is very similar to the uh, other YARN cluster, cluster mode. But there is some difference. So, any 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 questions until then? Yeah. So the question I have is the Spark driver. Yeah. What is the size? Does the size of the Spark driver matter? Uh, so this the reduced job is run on the Spark driver. Uh, reduced job will not run the run in, in Spark driver. What Spark driver do is he will, uh, as we know, uh, all your all your uh, Spark program will be translate into a RDD, RDD deck. So uh, this, this part of scene is done in Spark driver. And for your real task, so for example, your from one RDD to reduce to another RDD, this task is run inside of your executor. So uh, the memory of, of the driver is only care for about the, uh, the preparation and the analysis and the optimization thing. There is also some opt optimization. So, uh, for example, uh, if you are running Spark Circle job, he will optimize the sequence of the RDD and the level of the RDD he will reorganize for you. So this part of scene is, is, is done in driver, yeah, but in the real map or reduce or something, some task is done by executor. Is that, is that, is that answer your question? So how, how do you size the executor? Uh, Does it auto size? You can see it, but it will have default. So uh, there is some, some I can share with you some, some of the uh, executor memory. Executor memory. Mm, wait a moment. I think it's in the bottom of this one. I will not cover this, but if anybody has interest, I can uh, share this first. So for the executor of the, the executor memory, so it contains different types of memory. The left one is 30% for overhead. So, uh, and uh, the, the right is executor's memory. And uh, so uh, when you are, there is some limited for the memory, which is, uh, which is your execute, when you set your memory and uh, you, the memory size you will be plus 386 and, uh, 80, and, 80, and then uh, it contains all of your memory. So um, this one is, so this is the executioner, this is the memory of execution, ex executor. So <laughs> my, my concern is if your reduced job is very big yeah. and it overflows the executor which is running on, yeah. then you have just wasted your effort. You mean your re reduced job is very big? It's too big and it overflows the memory. Uh -huh. and it crashes. Uh -huh. and your job doesn't complete. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. Sometimes it will, be ma ma it, it will happen, but it will reschedule uh, another another uh, task for you, another container for you to run. So this one is also you need to think about when you're doing the uh, map and reduce, uh, the key is very important because the partition is very important because 
sometimes you uh, partition by some key, uh, some node will got a lot of data, some node will got only piece of data, so the, 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 the node got uh, so many data will crash. So th this one is how to design your, how to design your, uh, how to design your key and how to use the API to repartition your data and to m use some hashi algorithm or use some uh, key prefix things to make it very reasonable. So this, this kind of, okay. So we're back to the, back to this one. So until now, any questions for this Kubernetes? So essentially, Kubernetes doesn't support interactive mode. Interactive mode. Yeah, you can't do Spark uh, shell. Uh, yes, currently, as I know, yes, yeah, it's a new feature. But you can throw your, submit your job into Kubernetes. After you <laughs> done your code, then you can submit. Yeah. <laughs> so let's move to another. So uh, we just have a review of what we touched in previous uh, subtopic. Uh, the terminologies, the different Spark drivers, Spark application master, and Spark test. See? And we cover different kinds of deploy model which Spark has support. The Kubernetes model, the uh, YAM model, the Mesos model. We, we didn't touch Mesos model because I, I, I'm also not very familiar with this one. So anybody are very good at it can, can share about something. And uh, we also uh, explain some the process and the, uh, the execution model in Spark Yarn, how, how it can run and how we can, how we can make it more performance. -y. And uh, the last is how does Spark run with Kubernetes. So this is what we uh, briefly touched in the previous the subtopic. Uh, the next one is something else. So maybe, maybe uh, for most of the part of guys which has done this back program before is more focused on this one. It's because uh, we will always think about different questions or, or we will always meet different problems which is included in this. So the first one is how to automatically scale in and scale out the Spark cluster. I remember somebody, some, somebody told me about this question before, so I write in here. Actually, uh, how to scale in and how to scale out. For, it's, it's based on the, uh, if you are running in YARN model, it, it's based on the uh, YARN cluster. So uh, what you can do is just uh, optimize, or optimize your Spark program to make it more suitable to the YARN cluster. So for this scale in and scale out, so it's dedicated into the cluster thing. And how to optimi optimize our Spark program. So this one maybe uh, a lot of people care about is because I run, I run, I write a, I write a program, and I found it, it, it actually run very slower and, uh, as I expect. So maybe you, you initialize a lot of partitions, and uh, you initialize a, a different stage of Jaffa. So, and you use reduce by key and instead of combine by key, so there is so many considerations we can, we can optimize the uh, Spark program. And uh, uh, how to integrate with machine learning algorithm. So uh, this one is uh, some, some data scientists will care about because, because as I know, most part of our job is done, is done with data engineer part. For the machine learning part, he all, for the uh, data scientist part, he, he just uh, try to uh, write the algorithm and uh, discover the uh, analysis the data and uh, write the algorithm. What is the others we will prepare for him? We will build the pipeline. We will code in the, uh, make it scalable. We will, uh, we will uh, build the infrastructure, data, data lake, data platform. We will do a lot of part, a lot of jobs. So, but the quick question is how we integrate with machine learning algorithm. So uh, this is kind of like, uh, it's it's very similar to processing, processing. So uh, just think about it's kind of it's uh. It's just a subset of processing. You processing as a, you keep processing. You 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 learning based on your processing result, and then you optimize you optimize your algorithm. You uh, change the variables in your in your algorithm. You keep learning. You keep running. And you you evaluate and you. So this is kind of like is is include inside of this Spark. But Spark has a has a, a another library which is called Spark MNAP to uh, support the. 
machine learning thing, but there, there is some limitations for the uh, MNAP is because uh, some some algorithm do not support support partition data partition. You need to run this algorithm in or in the full set for data set, and uh, some algorithm and also some algorithm is not supported by this MNAP. So that's why a lot of people still use Python to do the uh, do the uh, machine learning thing. So uh, the first first thing is how to integrate with different storage system and streaming platform. Uh, this one, why this one is, is important is because when you are using Spark, when you are trying to uh, you, when you are trying to uh, in, integrate with other system, it's not it's not look like very easy. It's because sometimes uh, I have one experience as before is I I use Spark Streaming to write a uh, to write uh, files into file, HDFS file system. So you you know Spark Streaming is streaming is streaming uh, processing, and uh, every time you write into the uh, Spark file system, and uh, it will create a file for you. So that the result is it cr uh, will create a lot of result for you. So then, how you do it? <laughs> and so we and finally we just uh, write on another separate job to aggregate it together. And uh, how to choose the most uh, suitable serialized, serialized and deserialized framework? So Spark for uh, originally Spark use Java serialization framework. So when you when you uh, when you are processing when you are processing and uh, your result your processing result will save into uh, HDFS file system, and uh, when th this kind of this kind of way need a serialization and deserialization framework. So in initialize the built-in uh, serialization framework is is Java is Java provide. So you can use, but but uh, a lot of times we use the another serialization framework. So how to write unit test for Spark program? This is the most. Uh, Top questions other people ask me: <laughs> How to write? How to do unit test? How to do test in in big data array? How to write map reduced test? How to write Spark test? So the lucky thing is in Python we have PyTest, and in Java we have somebody else write a test framework for us, which is Spark test base. We can we can use that. We can uh, we, anybody are uh, interesting can uh, search in Maven repo. There is a uh, there's a guy who write. I, I will share with you guys in the later. But for in, for Python, if you are running the, if you are trying to write unit test, you can use PyTest. Okay. Is there any guideline on uh, serializing, deserializing? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spark Spark initially Spark support uh, Spark support a uh, Kira serialization. I think it's Ky. Can't remember very exactly. So, it's not, Spark has another very uh, performance serialization framework. You, you 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 can, but you need to uh, save, you you need to configure manually. You need to configure the serialization framework. But if you can, uh, you also can configure others. But you need to import the dependency. But this one is Java and the Kero serialization. Can exactly re remember the name. Sorry? Avro. Avro? Avro you can. Avro is a schema is a schema, but it you can involve Avro in your Spark circle. But this one is serialization and deserialization. You also can yeah. this is for protocol buffers. Yeah. Protocol buffers. Uh, protocol buffers is similar with Avro and uh, and others. Okay. When you save your data, you can use that. You you, you you use that to structure your structure your data. Uh, so we have so many deep questions. So let's go through with some few of few of it. Uh, this one is a uh, is a uh, kind of like ecosystem of Spark processing. So in your in the Bottom of this picture, we can see that there are so many different storage and also file system. Hadoop is a HFS. I so and uh, in the top there is Spark Core, which we write our RDD. I think it's because 
it encapsulates data as a RDD. And on top of that, there is three different things. is catalyze, catalyst optimizer. So that one is try to optimize your DAC, your DAC file, and uh, make it more performance. For example, you have a, let's make an example. If you have a map and you have a filter, so what this one can do is convert your sequence filter first and then map. So this kind of thing. And uh, uh, for this Spark streaming is another framework which supported by Spark. But this one, I think it's a micro batch. What is, what is, what's the uh, difference for micro batch and a, ba and a real micro batch and a real, pro pro real uh, streaming processing? Is the, I think it's granular of the, the, the it processing. And also GraphX, this one is also used for graph, graph processing. Uh, just imagine your Facebook network, your Facebook, your social networking, and how you store the uh, verticals and how you store the age, ages inside of your and inside of your uh, graph database, Neuro4j, and how and you then use Spark graph processing to uh, read 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 the data and to construct the uh, graph in memory. And uh, uh, in top of that is it's circle and uh, Spark frame, data frame and data set. It's um, it's kind of like uh, as we mentioned before. It's uh, encapsulated for all the type of processing. It provides a single entry for uh, for 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 Spark. So and also another very similar concept is Spark session and Spark contest. So a lot of people we are using confused about Spark con session and Spark contest. So actually, it's it's Spark session is. Uh, is encapsulated circle contest, hive contest, and uh, spark contest. It provides a single entry for different contest, and uh, it's a second version of spark contest. And on top of that, it's structured streaming and the graph frameworks and ML pipelines. It's more, it's some some other features which spark can support. Uh, for spark stre streaming, it's also a latest, uh, very new uh, feature which is try to touch the touch the um, real stream processing. So it's there it has a lot of similar features with Flink. So for example your infinite infinite table and your uh, processing each line, processing each record coming. So it's the, the feature is very similar. And um, ML pipelines is is machine learning pipelines. So it provided this one to uh, integrate to help to net support to net, net Spark support machine learning processing. So this is this is similar. This is same. So this two is uh, based on this Spark core. Spark is right with Scala, so it encapsulates Scala to provide Java, Python, and R some API. But yeah. so <coughs> until now, any any questions about this? So based on your experience, uh, have you encountered any types of data set that Spark cannot handle? Uh, how? Uh, any kind of a data set, like hierarchical data or whatever? Uh, in my previous previous experience, uh, the most uh, most uh, most uh, uh, usage of types is is structure. Yeah, it's structure type. It's from, for example, the dumping database dumping database. CSV files, Excel files. This is a lot of, and the traditional database. A lot of companies are trying to, uh, sp actually are spiking on this. Are trying to uh, use this one to process in the MySQL data, database, the data in MySQL database. So this is most uh, scenarios I, I have been experienced. Yeah. Any others? Okay, so uh, I, this one is another another information is maybe uh, we were curious when we are write, when we are writing the uh, Spark program and when we are to make the make it in production. So the job scheduler uh, still this this one is also a lot of people are asking me uh, Spark is. When I submit the Spark job, it run one time. How 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 do I make it keep running or make it? So uh, as before, we use some scheduler system. 
also, uh, for example, we uh, the the first uh, the first uh, project I touch related to data is using the cron job, which just uh, in Jenkins pipeline we use cron job to uh, running your to running your script, and the then and uh, and then uh, other project, the last project we are using the Airflow, and uh, Hue and OZ to uh, do the scheduler, but but not very not very uh, not very deeply touched about the Woozy, but Airflow can match your requirement if you have any questions. So uh, the last one is the staging server. Why I mentioned this is as before is when we when you connect the Spark when, when you are trying to run your Spark in the Yarn cluster, you are you are submit your job in your client. So sometimes we will use a middle server to uh, do the submit to run the submit script. So we are, we are not touch we are not touch the uh, we are not run run uh, run the script in your local laptop. So the pipeline is kind of like I uh, pull the code I pull the code in my staging server. And uh, the staging server is is in the same uh, is same network in, with the Yarn cluster. I pull the code in the staging server and I package, and I run the script to submit. So and the last thing is script to maintain the streaming job. This one is 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 weird is because you are imagine you have a streaming job, and uh, it will keep keep re keep receive the request. And how you do the, uh, for example, release next time? How you how you how you how you uh, maintain it? it? It keep running, so you need to write some manually write some script to shut down it and to uh, block the request and shut down it and replace and processing again. Okay. So, so this so this one is streaming job, and then another part is authentication. We mentioned before is uh, only Yarn can support. Kubernetes protocol to do the authentication inside of your cluster, and maybe there are some other uh, frameworks. For example, the Kinox, and uh, but this one is kind of like authentication outside. So this one is authentication inside. So authenticate your your jobs running inside of your cluster. So based on this one, any 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 other comments or any questions? So let's continue. Uh, this one is, let me drink a little water, please. This is a real user case we, we used before. When I leave it, when I leave this project, uh, the pipeline is this, but now it's more mature. So uh, the, the main process is we use a, we use a, a proxy, message proxy to uh, Forward the forward the uh, forward the data which from the application the left side the, the black the black icon represent the uh, application your real application for example your your your, your apps your uh, online sales system and we uh, send that data we send that data into uh, into the Kafka uh, why why is there is a middle wire in here anybody knows anybody knows why why I cannot Direct. It's because Kafka only support TCP, TCP, TCP protocol. It cannot support HTTP. You cannot just call HTTP to send, send request. So uh, we use a protocol proxy to uh, send the request, send the data into the uh, different topic. We partition the data based on your uh, business domain, and then uh, we write a streaming job. In run a streaming job with Jenkins pipeline, <laughs> keep running, and uh, uh, and uh, we extracting the the data from Kafka Kafka uh, topic. Anybody knows Kafka? I think it's, it, it's a message queue. It seems like Active MQ, but it's distributed distributed version of Rapid MQ or MQ QC. Oh, why didn't you use uh, we can. I think it's similar. It's because uh, in this time we, our client say we are use Kafka. Uh, you can use <laughs> Kafka and Fluent. Yeah, yeah, but it's more you involve more. You you need to use Fluent to ingesting your data into Kafka, and then I think it's, it's similar. It's based on how you 
how you how you choose it. Yeah. How many JSON files you create? One per topic or one per day? Uh, one per one per topic and. Uh, the, 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 the folder is topic and the subfolder is the uh, data, the, the date. So uh, your, your, the, the day you create, create this, create oh, this file. Yeah, 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 yeah. <coughs> and uh, after we create all this file in Data Lake, we will have a batch job which running normally because the, it's based on your requirement. If you are run to uh, running one second or it will, the architecture will hold down and you will have a new architecture. So it will run normally, so we just uh, make it simple to write a, write a processing, a batch processing job and to keep not only to, uh, and write a cron job to not only extract the data from, H, H, from the uh, file system and then we processing the data and we uh, save it into post, Postgres DB. You can you can choose any other DB, but this one is decided by our client side. So after that, you can use the Tableau to connect. Anybody knows Tableau? Tableau is a data visualization uh, tools. It's very popular, but it, it's very expensive. <laughs> so so uh, this too is some challenges. We very impression challenges is. The small files. We we think about a lot of ways. We are trying to, uh, as before, we are trying to save it into edge base, and uh, uh, we we follow. We, we go through a, lo a long way to discuss about this, and finally we just uh, write a write a job to aggregate all the files <laughs> to make it very simple and fast and then running. So our our client said we need to make this happen this this month just to make it so fast. Then all these things change. <laughs> you have no, you have no uh, ideas to. You have no uh, choice to find a very suitable architecture or very suitable decision. Make very suitable decisions. And the second is set up the environment, which is very tricky, is because uh, as before, we need to set up in our uh, our in companies internal internal uh, internal cloud. It's not internal cloud. It's a cluster, internal physical machines. So. But but the uh, the tricky thing is they separate the they separate the uh, cluster into different zone. So everybody everybody uh, have experienced some big company project will know that uh, for security reason they will have DMZ zoom and they will have some private zoom. They will have some public zoom. So uh, the the most uh, tricky thing is they give us some machines to in the different zones. That means zone or different, different zone, something. different different zone, different application zone. Different availability zone. Yeah, yeah. Singapore one, Singapore two. Uh, that kind of thing. yeah, yeah. That 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 kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing is because uh, they give me one private, one public, and one some some. So they have different policies for different zone. So they give us different zone. So uh, we need we need to use these machines to install the cluster. Wow, that's. Then you need to open, you need to clear up the, the port, the, the HTTP port or other ports which they, they need to communicate. And then they, it's very cost a long time to clean up all the ports and send it to the uh, infrastructure manager and they will open the port one by one or to, <laughs> to you and then you set up and then it's running. <laughs> Why do you use JSON in your data link? Uh, JSON? Because the best human readable text file. Uh, yes, it's 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 just because it's very easy to manip to operate. No other very special reasons. What do you use some binary serialization? Uh, maybe we think about some packet or some other, other very. More efficient. Yeah, more efficient way. But our thing is, because it's based on these scales. So if you save as packet or OC files, you need to process and you need to. I think I think I think I think you need you need to spend more time now. and and uh, uh, the developer in this part is not very familiar with with these files with these file types so we just uh, make it easy first and yeah yeah and then in the future we we change it so this is the uh, the project I has experienced long time ago before. <laughs>
So until now, any, any questions about this one or about this? So we have touched about something about the uh, Spark processing ecosystem, uh, different kinds of processing frameworks and the tools. And we'll touch about some tips and, uh, and, and some questions which we maybe in the future we will think about. And the last one is share our user case with any others, other peoples. So that's the thing. So the last thing is, is we can run a, we can run our script. What's the time now? Okay. So, oh. Actually, I, I write a algorithm. I not an algorithm. I write a recommendation algorithm, and uh, I install a cluster in AWS. So I can share with, share with you guys. Just a very small cluster. You write it in Java. Is it? Yeah, in Java. I write it in Java. Uh, I. So every time you want to, you want to uh, scale out, you need to, you need to configure the. Uh, you need to configure the uh, the DNS name or the IP address inside of the inside of your cluster, and then you you just run a refresh nodes in your in your uh, in your uh, cl in your uh, cluster inside of your cluster. It will automatically detect your new node. So uh, maybe uh, in that in that way you can uh, when you are trying to do it manually or do it automatically, you can write some script to uh, every time you want to plug in one node, and you can run the script, and it can automatically automatically uh, know your node and then it will shuffle the data and make it balance in, in, in the whole cluster. So how can I? So can I share something about the Is it too small? Yeah, really. Okay. This one is my uh, master, and I install uh, the name node and the resource manager inside. But sometimes, and the second. Secondary name node. This is about the HDFS very deeply, so you can, you can actually you can separate it out, separate your uh, YARN cluster and your HDFS file system out. But then if you after you separate, then you need to care about how the how they communicate together because they are separate, and uh, uh, when you are trying to uh, when you are trying to processing part of your data in the HDFS file, and you need to Uh, YARN, YARN node and your uh, HDFS node. Th there is a trade-off between you uh, how you can uh, maintain your your cluster. So let's just run one. Uh, what is slides? Uh, sometimes I always use use the staging to run this. So we saw a lot of a lot of information, right? <laughs> it's because I opened the debug mode. So if you want to uh, source some debug information, you can change the configuration, the log 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 4J configuration inside of the Spark. But this one has some some problem. May have some problem is because I use micro micro to uh, install my <laughs> my cluster because of the cost. <laughs> so sometimes it will have some memory over overhead or because. How big is your data? 
very, very small. Very, very small. <laughs> but in order to run this application, it will, own, it will initialize, it will use the memory themselves. The, the framework will also use it. So we can see that the young client and it, they try to negotiate. We can just go check some logs to see what happened. So they try to communicate with the node master, so the application master. Oh, so many, so many informations. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it's success or not. It's still running. So uh, what I try to mention is that you can use the oh you can use the you can use this script to run it inside of your staging server. So uh, sometimes you just uh, running inside of your CSCD tools, and sometimes you can run it manually if it's very small, but we don't usually do that. So, so the last one is practice. I think, I think we, we can skip this because not all people take the laptop, right? Yeah. If anybody has interest, we, I can share with, share with share some Can share some. Can share some how to write test in uh, Spark and how to uh, organize your organize your code. So when you are trying to, uh, how can I make it more? Is it, is it clear? <laughs> no. <laughs> I forgot. I, I'm not. I, I'm not complete. Can you can activate the presentation mode. Huh? You can activate the presentation mode. Huh? Check. Presentation mode. I have a presentation with my <laughs> technology before. Yeah. This is one, right? No. The first one. Oh, the first one. I'll toggle it. Okay, okay. So how to run, how to uh, make it, so if you want to uh, write some tests for your Spark program, you, you need to make it testable. So that means you, you better not uh, chain all your code into one function. So you better not, you better extract some of your function into some other functions. And then uh, based on that, so based on that, so you use some Library, which is written by this guy, uh, taste the uh, taste the uh, Spark taste base and uh, inherit the uh, shared Spark contest. It will, it will uh, actually it will it will initialize a contest when in the first time when you're in, at the beginning of the uh, test running. So and uh, all the tests will use that contest. So just uh, this one is just the same as the union test, and then we call your call your test function ah uh, sorry it's spark yeah 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 it's running running spark locally so i think that's all it's all today we skip this one so that's all today thank you guys <laughs>
have any 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 questions? Any feedbacks or questions? <laughs> How big would the data be?